Live from our news up here at Desawe in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil. Piccadilly Biscuits. And My Life Insurance. Three persons arrested for attempting to cause instability charged on five accounts. Uh, management of just one group of companies says government shutdown of Great Consolidated Diamonds Ghana Limited is illegal and unconstitutional. 22 Ghanaians deported from Germany and the United Kingdom for various offences. campaign to get poor Kwabenya roads fixed. We'll tell you about how residents of Kwabenya suffer regularly from respiratory diseases owing to dusty roads. We'll get a lot more on this as we go into the headlines tonight. Heaven insecticide spray and coil. Piccadilly biscuits and my life insurance. Persons arrested for attempting to cause instability charged on five accounts. Management of Just One Group of Companies says government set, uh, shutdown of Great Consolidated Diamonds Ghana Limited is illegal, unconstitutional, and regrettable. Also, 22 Ghanaians deported from Germany and the United Kingdom for various offenses. On our campaign to get poor Kwabenya roads fixed, we we'll tell you about how residents of Kwabenya suffer regularly from respiratory diseases owing to dusty roads. And on the international front, Supreme Court rules that Boris Johnson's decision to suspend Parliament was unlawful. We bring you details of these and many more stories coming up in the next one. Uh, to our very first story, three persons arrested on suspicion of possession of firearms and ammunition alert to be targeting the presidency have been charged with five counts. These include conspiracy to manufacture arms and ammunition without lawful authority and possession of explosives and firearms without lawful excuse. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanam. In his argument, Prosecutor ASP Sylvester Sare told the court the accused persons be remanded into police custody to make it easy for investigators to get access to them. He added since it is the BNI that is leading the investigation, the accused person should be specifically remanded into PNI custody. He told the court family members and the legal team of the accused persons will be given access to interact with them. The pleas of Dr. Frederick Yao Makpam, Dunya Kafui and Bright Alan Debra were not taken by the court. Meanwhile, according to prosecution, Wan Suli is at large. A member of the legal representative for the accused persons, Victor Kujoga Adawudu, opposed the argument of prosecution, stressing he wanted to know why the plea of his clients were not taken since prosecution has presented the fact sheet and the charges before the court. He argued that it is only the court that has the power to decide whether to remand the accused persons and not prosecution. ASP Asare responded by indicating prosecution had not concluded investigations, reasons why their plea were not taken. The presiding magistrate, Rose Monegiri, said there was no need taking the plea because some of the charges went beyond her jurisdiction. She further stated she appreciated why investigations need to be conducted, but cautioned prosecution she will give her own orders on the agenda if she does not see any changes to that effect. Speaking to the media, Victor Kojoga Adaudu was of the view government has been sensational and questioned why the accused persons were not charged with treason. This is a dilatory matter. Government is really under pressure. The corruption issues 
every day it's in there and they want some issue to come to divert attention and you know there are a lot of things that will come up as this matter unfolds. Government released a statement on September indicating a joint security operation led to the retrieval of several arms, explosive devices and ammunition from locations in Accra and Pong Baleji in Dodoa. The case has been adjourned to October 9. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News, Accra. And now 22 deportees from Germany and the United Kingdom have been received by the that's at the Kotoka International Airport Regional uh, Command. As much of fact, 17 of the Ghanaian deportees arrived from Germany on board a chartered flight. Uh, the deportees, all males aged between 21 to 60 years, were escorted by 67 police officers, including paramedics. They were deported for immigration-related issues, such as overstaying their entry permits and illegal stay. Ten of the deportees are from the Ashanti region, five from the Greater Accra region, and one each from the Bono and Northern regions. In a related development, the government of the United Kingdom has also deported five Ghanaians for overstaying their entry permit. The five who also arrived via a chartered flight were under 63 escorts, including two paramedics and one official from the High Commission. Now, our health is at risk. We frequent the pharmacy shops and hospitals due to the dust we inhale on this stretch. These were frustrations expressed by residents and traders along the Kwabinya Brekusu Road here in Accra. On our campaign aimed at fixing the poor Kwabinya roads, Evelyn Tengma visited the area and has come through with the following report. Want to mean now one week, two weeks, I won't call hospital. If you can come in the hospital, we report Nina Mania Mamma. Yea, Branca Sanka Sanka Saka. And can Kaya, Pama, dear, I say. Want to me, Pama, dear white. In foot three coimu, Nasa ye wa. Quine never babble to a banner. Because I was nigh a woo, there be a bill would be empty in a tea or cause for one asthma. Ah, on nibby. Me calls with your same moon in I don't think I say me moon yafi. I don't go to hospital. I just buy. Uh, I, I would say painkiller or maybe I go to the pharmacy and go and buy my small medicine. But it affects us seriously. When I go, I go to the pharmacy and I go and buy my medicine because I tell them I have caught. For the first time I started this job, I feel something bad in me. You see, the dust is too much. So if you come here in the morning, by the, by the time you left here, all your shirt, your hairs, everything will change in color. At times you have some headaches and at times you have some water coming from our head and it's affecting us badly. We visit the nearest pharmacy to for some medicine. Health officials of some hospitals and clinics along the Kwabina stretch say a good number of people who report to the facilities are diagnosed of upper and lower respiratory tract infections. Pharmacy shops on the stretch also say asthmatic patients frequent the shops to buy inhalers while others report to buy drugs for cold due to the dust they inhale. Aside the health needs of the people, officials of this clinic who will not speak on camera say due to the bad nature of the road, not too many clients visit the facility as taxi and other commercial drivers refuse to carry clients to the clinic. And this is your election command center and our constituency watch tonight. Created in 2004, voters in the Aswasi constituency of the Ashanti region have remained loyal to the opposition National Democratic Congress. But the ruling New Patriotic Party wants to annex the seat in the 2020 parliamentary elections. The NPP leadership in the Ashanti region says a strategy including the endorsement of one candidate in the contest will see victory for the party. William Evans Incom filed the following report. 
carved out of the Asuka East constituency during the 2004 general elections, the Asawasi constituency remains one of the political fortresses of the opposition NDC, but a waterloo for the ruling NPP. Elections in the constituency have been a two-horse race between the two major political parties in Ghana. In the 2004 parliamentary elections, Patricia Apiege, current Deputy Minister for Environment, Science and Technology, stood on a ticket of the new Patriotic Party, but she lost to Adamu Jibril of the NDC, who secured a total of 33,000 541 votes, representing 49.70%, while Patricia Piaget secured 29,067 votes, representing 43.70%. Current Minority Chief Whip, Mohamed Muntaka Mubarak, will later win a by-election in 2005, following the demise of the certain MP. In the 2008 elections, the MPP's Dr. Mohamed Abdul Kabir pulled 42.38% and lost to Muntaka's 56.63%. Nana Otri Teria Entry was given the task by the MPP during the 2012 elections to break the jinx, but the party's gains further declined to 40.26% while Muntaka increased his gains to 57.01%. In the 2016 elections, the current municipal chief executive for Asokore Mampong, Alhaji Ali Duseidu, consolidated the ruling MPP gains in the Asanwase constituency by shooting the percentage from 40.26% in 2012 to 45.89%. Muntaka's vote dropped to 53.57%. Primaries in Asawasi constituency have come under tensed temperature. On July 29, 2019, the Ashanti Regional Executives of the NPP resolved that the three orphan constituencies in the region, including Asawasi, shall sponsor the candidature of the three MMDCEs in those constituencies with the aim of annexing the seats. Article 9, Clause 20, and Article 18 of the party's constitution and other conventional practices gave the regional executive committee the powers to take some decisions that will inure to the supreme interest of the party. Presidential staffer Manaf Ibrahim, who attempted to contest Alidu, was suspended. The gates were open for all to contest. I'm telling you, it wasn't only Alidu who picked their form for Aswasi, it was the only Bamba who picked their form for um, addressing the master. Others also picked forms, but they all went through the process of vetting and the rest. And it was during the vetting process that came out that some, that some two people of them are well uh, on, on suspension, and therefore we, 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 the, we use the party's processes in doing that. To have a candidate is the sole responsibility, right, of the National Executive Committee. With barely six days to the primaries, it doesn't look like Manaf Ibrahim will realize his ambition of standing as a parliamentary candidate. I am going to tell you why the Aswasi seat means everything to the ruling New Patriotic Party. And for two reasons. One, the Ashanti region currently has 47 constituencies. After the 47 constituencies, the MPP, that's the ruling party, have 44. Now let's talk about Kumasi political enclave, where we have 11 political seats um, by way of constituencies. And these are Subin, Kwadaso, Inshaeso, Otafo, Oforikru, Mensha North, Mensha South, Asukwa, Bantama, Suame, and Asawanse, which to their MPP is the old one because this particular seat they have never won since its creation in 2004. And in fact, if you like, since the inception of the Fourth Republic, which gave birth to multi-party democracy in Ghana. So winning this particular seat, especially within Kumasi political enclave, is everything to the ruling New Patriotic Party. One, if they're able to win, they can now say they have total dominance as far as Kumasi political enclave is concerned. And that journey starts from the primaries. On Saturday, Ali Duseidu, the sole aspirant, 
will only need a majority yes vote to lead the party again to win the Aswansi seats. Because uh, in Aswansi constituency, uh, not a single day or not a moment have we presented a candidate for two occasions. So it's one way or the other uh, going to inform us that the party is poised for victory. Sailing through the Electoral College is just a step to the bigger challenge. And Alidu tells me he has no excuse but to annex the Asawasi seat for the MPP. Will you consider as a failure if you are unable to annex the seat for the MPP um, during the 2020 after the 2020 general elections, parliamentary elections? I wouldn't have any excuse. If I don't, I don't win the seat. Uh, there wouldn't be any excuse. As the clock ticks, it is just a matter of time for history to be made or the status quo maintained in the Asuanse parliamentary elections. William Evans Inkum, TV3 News, Asuanse. And we'll be bringing you more on the NPP parliamentary primaries this weekend on all our platforms. So look forward to that. Moving on, the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations Against Political Vigilantism has given government a weak ultimatum to change its position on its white paper on the Ayawasu West War gone <coughs> by election violence. The coalition says government's decision to reject some of the recommendations of the Emil Short Commission report is practically flawed and could be a recipe for disaster, particularly in the upcoming 2020 general elections. George Quinan has more. The Emil Short Commission was set up by government to probe the Ayawasu West war gone by election violence, which witnessed destruction of property and injuring many others. The commission presented its findings to government after engaging some key witnesses, after which government also issued a white paper. This is the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations Against Political Vigilantism says government has absolutely no basis to reject some of the findings of the report. According to the coalition, accepting the impartial findings of the Emil Short Commission report is a first step in addressing the issue of political violence that has become a matter of grave national concern. Chairman of the coalition, Mensa Thompson, expressed worry about government stance, indicating that it undermines the possibility of any lessons that could be learned from the incident. At the end of the day, government still came back and told us what they think, yeah. what happened at Ayahuasca West Wogan, but not what the commission has brought up. You understand? What they think. And that is why I said that. If government had the capacity to be able to tell us, what happened? Then why was the need for the for the Commission of Empire to waste the country's resources and time to go and look into it? Then after the, they've come back, we reject it and tell us what you think happened. Clearly that cannot be right. The coalition wants government as a matter of urgency to prosecute the operative who had a scaffold with MP for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George. On compensations, the coalition demanded that in the coming days, government comes up with a compensation package and clear procedure for compensating affected victims. It is incumbent on government to protect you and I. By their posture, they are encouraging people to misbehave in 2020. That is our fear. That is the only fear. And you know, the youth, the youth is at the heart of every election violence. And if these things are happening and nobody is talking about it, and then by the grace of God, people have been caught on camera slapping MPs and the rest and you have been asked to prosecute them criminally. Why do you show them and want to empower them to do it? If care is not taken and something happens in 2020, we blame the government. Meanwhile, the coalition expects government to come up with a roadmap for implementation of the recommendations in a bid to instill confidence in the security agencies and the public. On our MTN video report tonight, our citizen journalist Anyan Tibawem God reports on abandoned teachers' bungalow at uh, Fumbese in the Upper West region. This incomplete two story building you're seeing here is a bungalow meant for teachers of the Fumbese Senior High and Greek School. It was started since 2008 2009 but has been abandoned after it reached the roofing level. So we are calling on government stakeholders to see to it that it is completed. The accommodation challenge of, for teachers in the senior secondary school, this 
Secondary school is just 250 meters away from the building you are seeing here. So we are pleading on you, on the government and all stakeholders, to see that this abandoned building is not left like this. You are citizen journalist, Anita Bawin God, from BC, Bosa South District, in the Upper East region. Interesting. So, as a Nyatiba, we am God, uh, citizen journalist there. But you can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055 a very good evening to you. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. Let's do some business now with me, Nana Ikria Mensah Brampa. Now, Ghana is to benefit from a 1.5 million Swiss franc funding for the next three years for the implementation of the Global Quality and Standards Program. At the launch in Accra, the Swiss ambassador to Ghana, Philip Stadler, uh, noted the program is to help increase Ghana's cashew, oil and palm, as well as cocoa exports competitiveness. The Global Quality and Standards Program is a joint project by the Ministry of Trade and Industry, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, and Switzerland through the State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, CECO. This project, which is based on an innovative approach developed by UNIDO and CECO, is to strengthen the quality and standard compliance capacity in selected value chains of partner countries to facilitate market access for small and medium-sized enterprises. Swiss ambassador to Ghana, Philippe Stalder, stated the project aims to strengthen the technical competence and sustainability of the national quality infrastructure and increase SMEs compliance with international standards and technical regulations of the selected value chains. Addressing the constraints in these value chains will unlock benefits to spur Ghana's efforts in building a resilient economy that is able to withstand shocks. By upgrading the national quality infrastructure, we will hopefully see benefits to other areas of the same business sectors. Quality Control Company, a subsidiary of Cocoa Board, received accreditation for its pesticide residue laboratory. Its mandate is to ensure that all parcels of cocoa and some other produce delivered to the local and international market are of premium grade and free from pest. Industrial Development Officer at UNIDO, Juan Pablo Davila Sanchez, spoke about the process for accreditation and what it means for the country. As you need, we supported the QCC in order to improve technical capacities of the analysts and the people who are performing the inspections. The documentation uh, also in place, we handhold them to get the documentation, the methods uh, ready uh, to improve on the testing accuracy of the services for the laboratories. Uh, this means uh, the method validation. Uh, the comparison, comparison with other laboratories in order to ensure that the, the test results are within a range acceptable and internationally competent. Maxwell Samuel Kakari Ado is the managing director of QCC. What it means is that our staff are well trained now, more confident, and our services are being recognized internationally. The quality control company Cocoa Board will satisfy any produce in the sub region. Right, let's now look at some activities within the telecommunication industry. As MTN Ghana has organized its annual Yellow Sorry in Tamale, that sought to provide a platform where MTN's top leadership interact with a section of its customers. The evening was filled with music and a series of activities that saw some guests being presented with prizes, such as Samsung Galaxy A70, among many others. The MTN Yellow Soiree helps to create an informal engagement between the executive leadership and its valued customers to bond and deliberate on ways of improving quality services and also thank their customers for choosing to associate with them. Addressing the gathering, Chief Executive Officer for MTN, Selom Adedavo, assured its customers in the northern region of MTN's commitment to continue to invest and improve on their product and service delivery and the development of the region. We're here to listen to you, we're here to bond with you, but most importantly, we're here to make sure that you take some time out of your busy schedules, you have fun, drink, dance, 
Let's make merry tonight. In terms of corporate social responsibility, the chief executive said MTN will continue to invest beyond their network and extend it to other projects as a way of giving back to society. Mr. Adedavo expressed his excitement whilst disclosing to the audience that the 600-bed capacity dormitory for Tamasco is the highest investment ever for MTN in the northern region, which will cost them 2 million cities. The CEO, however, appealed to the authorities in the region to help them address some of the challenges they face whilst delivering services to its customers. Our biggest challenge for this year has been fiber cuts. And when fiber cuts happen, sometimes we lose the entire network. And this is really damaging and impacting the quality of the service that we want to bring to your doorsteps. All we need is for the contractors, the road contractors in this room that you know, to contact us when they are going to build a new road so that we can coordinate with them and either relocate the fiber or agree how they how they dig the roads to make sure they don't damage the fiber that we have. On the rumor that MTN's mobile money service is shutting down, Mr. Adedavo called on its customers to ignore such rumors. It's the most ridiculous thing anybody can ever say. And a few weeks ago, we had someone share a video that MTN mobile money is shutting down. We're alive and kicking and we're going nowhere. We're here for you. So please, if you hear anybody say this, help us propagate the message that we won't be doing this if we're shutting down. This is not what companies do when they are shutting down. The event was graced by the Northern Regional Minister, Salifu Said, the Northeast Regional Minister, Solomon Namlitz Boa, who doubles as the MP for Bunkurugu constituency, MP for Tamale North, Al Hassan Suyini, and MP for Savlugu, Samet Gunu, among other key stakeholders. All right, so remember you can watch us on DSTV channel 279. Also, we're streaming live on Facebook. It's TV3 Ghana. Let's do uh, issues on banking now. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Addison, says the national investment has been recapitalized. NIB is one of the five banks to benefit from the Ghana Amalgamated Trust. Government set up the Ghana Amalgamated Trust, GAT, a special purpose vehicle, last year to recapitalize some local banks, which required a top up. The local banks were deemed to have good corporate governance practices, but were financially challenged. ADB, Prudential Bank, UMB, Sahel Omini Bank, and NIB were the five local banks. Government had more or less provided the necessary guarantees that if they faced any difficulties, the government was going to step in. Now, out of the five banks, two of them were state-owned banks, Agricultural Development Bank and NIB. So far as I know, I think the NIB recapitalization has been completed. The government has contributed their share of what is required to raise NIB. And I think in the last week or so, we have had all the others also completed. The only sticky point is the case of NIB, where the capital requirements appear to be larger than we had originally envisaged. So obviously NIB is a bank that we need to do some more work on. But remember, it is a state bank, so the considerations are, are very different. Dr. Ernest Addison noted the financial sector cleanup that lasted two years has been successful. Most of the weaker institutions which were driving up operational costs, which were making lending rates high, are out of the system. If you take the microfinance segment, for example, these were the institutions that were setting up deposit rates. Microfinance institutions were bidding up deposit rates in the market because of their inefficiencies. And yet they were the ones offering the 31%, 32% rates to attract deposits. Now I understand that the deposit rates in that segment have collapsed from over 30% to around 15%, which is what we We have more news on 3news.com. That's it for business tonight with me, Nana Ikria Mensa Abrampa. Alfred? 
Okay, thank you for the business news. Let's uh, move on to some issues with education because 200 students from six coastal districts in the Western region have earned a, an ECA Energy, that's a GNPC scholarship for the 2019-2020 academic year. This follows the company's promise to increase the number of beneficiaries to ensure more brilliant but needy pupils are able to transit from junior high school to senior high school. The Aka Energy GMPC Scholars Program is the flagship social investment project of the upstream petroleum company operating the Deepwater Tunnel Cape Three Points oil block. The program, which began in 2012, has benefited almost 800 students. Since the introduction of the free senior high school policy, the package for beneficiaries now includes books, trunks, chop box, counseling and monitoring, and career seminars. At a ceremony to outdoor beneficiaries for the 2019-20 academic year, General Manager of Aka Energy Ghana Limited, Jean Helgi Skogen, explained that the company instituted the program because it appreciates the value of education. About 40 of the 120 beneficiaries who graduated from secondary school had five A's in eight subjects. Indeed, such high academic performance is a key encouragement for us and our partners to continue to support this program. Corporate Affairs Manager of GMPC said the company believes in education as a tool for national development and has committed huge investment in that area. We um, have also um, been providing scholarships um, both locally and internationally for brilliant but needy students to pursue their education. And we're also uh, making significant investment into our leading universities here in Ghana to um, transform the delivery of STEM education. Director for Secondary Education at the Ministry of Education, Angela Tinamensa, while applauding Aka Energy and GMPC for the support, outlined some interventions by government to, to ensure school pupils do not forfeit their education due to financial constraints. You've had a, an opportunity to prove to us that you can perform. And as a result of that, as you go to school, make use of every facility that is on the compound. And when you do that, Beyond the sky will be your limits. The Aka Energy Scholars Program is three years, but it is renewable based on academic and disciplinary record while in school. Quality insurance company QIC has outdoed the Go Girl Motor Insurance policy targeted at corporate women. A portion of the policy premium will be used to support pediatric facilities across the country. The launch of the QIC Go Girl policy comes at a time when insurance penetration has fallen to 1%. Go Girl policy promises to meet the needs of the contemporary woman and relieve the burden of working class Ghanaians. Apart from prompt payment of claims, policyholders can enjoy free courtesy car in case of an accident and a portion of the premium donated to support pediatric facilities in the country. This new, um, notion that insurance companies don't pay claim, it's not true. 33% the statistics show that everything that we collect, 33% is a loss. Right. So we do pay claims. And let's come to Go Girl. Go Girl policy, it gives free courtesy cars to women when they get an accident. It will service your car once a year for you. And it will facilitate your driver license renewal at the prestige DVLA office. Representative of the National Insurance Commission, Moses Aka Jane, acknowledged the commission is creating an electronic database to capture and monitor motor insurance. He encourages insurers to abide by the claims guideline of the Insurance Commission. The National Insurance Commission is uh, developing an electronic database that we hope would capture monitor and regulate motor insurance. The best form of advertising for insurance is prompt processing and payment of claims. And we want to encourage all insurance companies to abide or to comply with the claims guidelines of the National Insurance Commission. 
Quality Insurance Company has a capitalization of over 50 million CDs. You're still live here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279 all across the world. On all right, so regardless of their exit from the reality house, the three evictees of Ghana's most beautiful are grateful for the opportunity. The contestants are hopeful for better prospects out of GMB. Sewa, the Shanti region. Otobia, the greater Accra region. Despite being evicted Oye from the eastern region, Sewa from the Ashanti region and Otobia from the greater Accra region are optimistic of brighter opportunities. For them, Ghana's most beautiful platform has given them sufficient exposure. So Ghana's most beautiful has, has been a reality to me and then since I partook in it, I, I realized um, I have built on my confidence level and then I've become more outspoken. It is sad that I'm leaving the reality complex, but it doesn't end here. GMB is doing a great work and so far I did my best and I did everything I could, but voting, I didn't get enough votes, so I think that was what happened and I have to go home. But I think I've learned a lot from the ladies. How I relate to people, it's, it's different now. It has really built my confidence level. And I've been able to relate with other people very well because I've been living in a house with girls for like from 15 other places. But we've been able to bond up quickly. So they were grateful for the opportunities given and the lessons learned and hinted the eviction from the show is not the end of their plans. I'll be promoting my music. I was into music before coming to GMB, so I'd like to promote it and my fashion designing. And also, I want to take a project on streetism, which I'll be helping the street children get a place of their own. Next is um, I'm going to embark on my project, which is making the voices of the voices heard, supporting and inspiring um, sexually assaulted people. Yes, yeah, so basically that's what I'm going to be doing. And also, I'll go back to school. <laughs> a campaign for um, immunization for children under five. I'll, I'll be doing that and then be, I'll continue with my nursing career. I would miss the stage performance and then I'm going to miss the ladies and then I'll miss the fact that they tagged me with the name Foodie. <laughs> You are down but not out yet. Mm -hmm, you know? Definitely. So uh, I think that is worth the commendation. Absolutely. I mean, that you are carrying the dream across, you know. So congratulations to the three. We wish them very well. On behalf of the rest of the team, my name is Alfred Akansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Thanks very much for watching.